Vargas Llosa. Uh, and I think that um, those of us who care about the issues that the Green Party stands for uh, have to begin to ask some really tough questions about ourselves. Um, uh, because, uh, frankly, you know, as this last election illustrated, uh, we're not having any traction with the American public. Uh, and I think the question has to be asked why. Uh, we're not going to build a movement if we're not relentlessly and ruthlessly self-critical. Uh, we'll go nowhere. Uh, and uh, I'll lay out some of my own ideas uh, as to why I think we have failed. Uh, and I think we have failed at a moment of crisis when these ideas should resonate uh, as they did, uh, we saw with Zuccotti Park, uh, out through the mainstream. Uh, and I think first and foremost, uh, the failure of the Green Party is that it continues to play by their rules. Uh, it continues to uh, put far too much energy into electoral politics. Uh, that doesn't mean that the Green Party shouldn't field candidates, but that should be a very tangential part of what this party is about. Um, the other problem is that I think that it retreats uh, far too often into the abstract. Uh, we, at this point, don't need another critique of the corporate state. Uh, I think all of us in this room, indeed beyond this room, uh, have a very clear understanding that we have undergone a corporate coup d'etat in slow motion, and it's over, they've won. Uh, I don't think that has even become a radical <coughs> idea uh, within uh, most of American society. Um, large numbers uh, within this country recognize that it is impossible to vote against the interests of Goldman Sachs, ExxonMobil, Citibank, Bank of America, General Electric, you've got the list. Uh, and the question is, how do we respond? Uh, what is the most effective way to begin to mobilize against these entities that uh, quite literally are going to destroy the ecosystem on which the human species depends for life? And we have very, very little time left, as anyone who has read climate science reports, including the newest report uh, from the World Bank of all places. Uh, understands. Uh, these uh, unfettered, unregulated capitalism, as Karl Marx understood, is a revolutionary force. It commodifies everything. Uh, human beings become commodities. The natural world becomes a commodity that it then exploits until exhaustion or collapse. And that's why when we see the melting of the summer Arctic sea ice, uh, Shell Oil looks at it as a business opportunity. It's the death throes of the planet. Um, and uh, to continue to essentially funnel energy into a dead political system, which is what we have. The political theater itself, uh, I think, uh, essentially is going to suck out whatever life force we may be able to impart. Uh, but the fact is, the only way that we are going to build any kind of effective resistance uh, to these corporate forces is to rebuild the movements uh, that prove to be all of the uh, true correctives to American democracy. Howard Zinn uh, pointed this out in uh, The People's History of the United States, uh, as did uh, Baird in his study of constitutional conventions. Uh, this uh, country was never set up to be direct, uh, to foster direct democracy or popular rule. Uh, it was created by a white, oligarchic, largely slave-holding elite uh, that made sure that its positions of economic and political privilege would be retained, uh, so that all of the openings in American democracy were fought for and often paid for with the blood of abolitionists, suffragists, uh, working men and women in unions, uh, civil rights workers, and let's not forget the Communist Party that has been utterly erased from American history. But the Communist Party, certainly in the 1920s and 30s, especially if you were black, because uh, uh, there was uh, segregation, uh, whether it was in the Chautauqua movement and the social gospel, whether it was in the uh, Pullman uh, railroad strike, uh, and whether it was, although Debs was, was wary of this, whether it was in the socialist movement itself. Uh, and I, I think that, that we have to turn away from the enticement of running candidates here, running candidates there, having seminars on this topic or that topic. Uh, I, I just think it's going to go nowhere. Um, I think we have to begin to turn and do a complete about-face and focus solely 
on what is absolutely concrete. For example, um, if I was running the Green Party, and uh, I have no intention of ever running any party, uh, I would put all of my energy into building a food bus uh, so that when there were acts of civil disobedience, whether that is against the Keystone Pipeline, whether that is students who finally decide that they have had enough of the debt peonage, uh, that of course is part a long history, uh, or has a long history in this country of being a very effective form of political control, as any African American can tell you. Uh, you, you, you arrive um, and essentially are handing out, uh, as we did at Zuccotti Park, bagels with peanut butter on them and coffee. Uh, I think that that is the only way that we are going to build a movement, and that is to, to those of us who care about challenging this system, begin to create logistics by which resistance is possible. And that, of course, is the problem. Uh, the, uh, I covered the uh, Civil War in El Salvador for five years. Uh, and, and became very uh, familiar with the, the a very effective tactics of counterinsurgency, uh, which broke the FMLN, rebel movement in El Salvador, which was the most sophisticated rebel force in Latin America, far outstripping anything that took place in Nicaragua under Somoza or under Bautista in Cuba. When I first got to El Salvador in uh, 83, I was caught up in firefights that were lasting uh, numerous hours between upwards of eight and 900 armed rebels and a battalion. Uh, once Reagan in the, in the uh, early part of 1984 sent down a fleet of 70 Huey helicopters, it essentially made that capacity to build uh, large units uh, and which you need logistical bases from impossible. Uh, and when Zuccotti Park was wiped out, uh, I knew precisely what the state was doing. Let's be clear who was doing it. His name is Barack Obama. It was a coordinated effort out of Washington to erase the encampments. And that was denying the opposition, the first effective opposition against corporate power, a logistical base with which they could work from. And if you talk to those, and I think one of the most important acts of civil